Hi everyone, welcome back to Mad About Cards and Crafts and the Crescent Creation August Release Hop and Giveaway. There are three digital stamp sets that are being released over in the Crescent Creation store. Neha did open up a new website, so her store is online and not on Etsy anymore. I will have that and all of the participants in the hop linked in the description box below. I am going to show you the three stamp sets. The first one is called O oh Nuts. The second one is called Pumpkin Patch. And finally, the stamp set that I'm using today is Lemonade. I did decide to create kind of like an in-home lemonade bar. So I printed out my images onto Copic Express It paper and I'm going to do about three minutes of Copic coloring. I do like to leave a little bit of Copic coloring in for those of you that enjoy the coloring. I started with an E27 marker and I did map out my shadows. I blended it out with an E25 and finally I highlighted what little space there was left with an E23. I did uh, right here add the E27 back in because I did want to give it kind of like a little bit of a wood grain look and then I'll blend it out with my E25 and we'll move on to the table. Now the table is going to be colored with the same markers, so E27, 25, and 23. I will not add the wood grain to that. So while I'm doing this little bit of coloring, let me talk a little bit about the hop. There are three stamp sets, as I showed you, that are being released. Nia is generously offering all three of those stamp sets to a grand prize winner. In order to enter the hop, all you need to do is leave a comment. So if you watch my video, leave a comment. If you go to the next channel and watch the video, leave a comment. Those are all separate entries into the giveaway. The winner will be announced in the community tab over on Nia's channel. I will have the, I believe it's August 22nd, but I will have all of that information linked in the description box below. So make sure that you do hop along. I will leave all of the participants in the hop. I'll leave all of them there so in case you think you may have missed somebody, you can find your way. For the lemons, I basically used two colors, the Y6 and then the Y4. Uh, for the Lemon 8, I ended up using three colors, so that little canister, I don't show it, but I used a Y2 as well. I thought that I would go with a scene building, like kind of like a home decor card, because I really loved the sentiment on this, and I thought that it would be perfect for this picture. Now, I did use a couple of the images that were released last month, and I will have that digital collection linked in the description box below. So the picture frame and the table all came from another release. It was like a teacher appreciation release, a back to school release. And so those two elements did come from a different stamp set, but I'm going to link those in the description box below. I thought that I would go with some nice bright blue colors, and then I'm going to cut this out using my Pink Fresh Studio ornate banner dies. These are the slimline version, but I do want my card to be more of a custom size card. So I don't want the bottom of that banner to go all the way down because that would just be way too much white space. So you saw that I did adjust where I cut that panel. And then I have this slimline paper from my stash. I'm going to use the next layer, which is the largest layer in the ornate banner stamps uh, die set and I am going to adjust it where it needs to go and I'll take it over to my Vagabond and I'll cut that piece out as you can see. One of my favorite things to do when I'm doing some inside scene building, I am not very good at large or long brush strokes with Copic markers. So these Tim Holtz stencils, he has several of them available, have kind of like a floral print background and so I'm using Kitsch Flamingo and a small finger dauber, and I'm making my own wallpaper here. I think that adding detail and interest to cards is probably one of my favorite parts of card making. So I, when I start a card, as I've said many times, I kind of like I printed this out. I knew that I was doing 
an indoor uh, scene, but I didn't really think about how I was going to finish the card off. So a lot of times I just think about what I have in my stash and I go with that. So you see that I did use the salvage patina on the bottom and that salvage patina is going to ground my table. And now I need to fill in behind the table and I need to uh, bring the carpet, for lack of a better term, or the floor, um, I, need to, I need to bring it up to the wall. So I thought, hmm, why don't I create some beadboard? And I'm not doing any measuring. The only thing I'm using this ruler for is to try to get a fairly straight line because I couldn't draw a straight line with a Copic marker if my life depended on it. So I started at the top and I drew at the bottom of the wallpaper and you saw that I did go ahead and go over some of the over stenciled sections because I really didn't measure where I was stenciling to begin with because I still didn't know exactly where I was going and that's okay because you can color over it with the Copic markers. You'll notice that I have the C0 cap on the screen that's because I went with the lightest color that way if there were any mistakes that I needed to cover up when I bring in my C1 that will allow me to do that. So I'll bring that C1 in, I'll reinforce the coloring and some of the lines in that bead beadboard. As you saw, I did add kind of like a base board or a base section to that beadboard where it meets the carpet. I'm going to deepen up that salvage patina just a little bit and we have a cute little scene. I'm going to glue this to my background and I'm kind of looking now at where the picture is and where the top of my card is. And I think there's just a little bit too much open space. I thought about bringing in a piece of string and maybe creating like a hanger, but this is only one layer. So I, I printed directly onto the paper and colored directly onto that paper. So I thought, hmm, I think I might have something that I can make a swag with. So I took uh, some Tim Holtz dies that I had, some of their foliage dies. I did cut them down, so this is about, I would say, half the size that the die was. And I used some more of that salvage patina to bring that together. And I'm going to build a swag over the top of my picture, and that's going to break up the rest of that card. So. Adding little details such as the beadboard, using your stencils to create wallpaper instead of trying to color the background, those are easy ways that you can add details to your card that not only are going to enhance the look of the card, but it's also going to make life a little bit easier for you. I'm so glad that you joined me today. Once I glue this bow on, that's going to be all. I want to make sure that you do uh, stop at the other participants in the hop. Make sure that you show them some love with some kind comments. And until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day. Thanks so much for joining me.